What's up guys, Brian with Down to Ride MTB, and I'm back with one of my videos that looks at a certain number of bikes at a certain price point. This time, we're looking at six hardtails that all come in around $900. Now bikes, just like anything in this world, have been affected by inflation. Prices are going up. You're just not getting as much as you used to. But you'll see in this video that you can still get a handful of bikes that are trail worthy, quality bikes, while at the same time spending less than $1,000. Now before we actually get into any of the bikes, and I'll leave a timestamp here if you wanna jump ahead, I really wanna focus on some of the basics, some of the things that you'll see on these bikes because I don't want you to just look at this video and say, okay, here's the six bikes this guy found. I gotta pick from these six. I wanna give you the knowledge of some of the components, some of the frame specs, geometry, things like that that you should be looking at. So let's jump into some of those basics right now and then we'll look at the bikes. We'll start with a couple things that are specific to the bike frame itself. First is the head tube. Now, a lot of bikes at this lower end of the budget spectrum come with straight steerer tubes on them. There's really nothing wrong with that. It's been a standard for years. It's plenty strong enough. However, a newer standard that's coming out is a tapered head tube. It's thinner at the top and wider at the bottom. And the big thing with that is just future upgradability. If you're looking to upgrade your fork, uh, many of the higher end forks only come with tapered steerer tubes on them. Now, a lot of times you can also get an adapter for the headset, but if you have a bike that has a tapered head tube to begin with, then you're just better off. Now, the other thing the head tube determines is a pretty big part of the geometry, and that's the head tube angle. This is a measurement in degrees that affects how far out in front of the bike that front wheel gets. Now, most bikes in this segment are gonna come somewhere between maybe a 69 and a 68, maybe a 67 degree head tube angle. In my opinion, the lower the number, meaning the more raked out, the farther forward that wheel is, the better. Especially in this segment where you're not gonna see things like you know, 65, 64 degree head tube angles, which might be great for downhill bikes, but not for general trail purpose bikes. So to me, the lower the number, the better on this. It's gonna be more stable at speed. You're gonna feel better descending. Now to the fork itself, this is a mountain bike, so anything you're gonna be looking at is gonna come with some sort of suspension fork on it. Most of those are gonna be coil spring forks in this price point. Coil springs don't give you the adjustability that air forks have, but that's just kind of where you fall in this price range. A lot of them are gonna come with SR Sun Tour forks, and the hierarchy of those are the XCT, the XCM, and then the XCR. Each one of those getting a little bit better than the last. But in general, all coil spring forks in this price range are just not really that great. They're not gonna give you adjustability for your weight, for the rebound, for compression, and things like that that you'll get with an air fork. Moving on to the brakes. Any bike worth checking out in this price point should have disc brakes. If you see anything with rim brakes, just avoid it. There are two types of disc brakes. You have cable actuated brakes and then also hydraulic brakes. Hydraulic brakes are gonna be a little bit stronger. Uh, you're not gonna to have to pull quite as hard. You're just gonna get a better bite out of those. One other thing to think about with the brakes is the rotor size. The bigger the rotor, the more stopping power. Sometimes you'll see a larger rotor in the front because that's where most of your braking power comes from. Tires are the next thing to kind of consider, although I wouldn't say they'd be a deal breaker on any bike because you can always swap those out and get something for your preference, even though, of course, that's adding cost. Uh, but generally on the bikes you'll see in this price range, they're XC bikes, cross-country bikes. They're going to have faster rolling tires. Uh, nothing wrong with that, and it makes sense for this segment of bikes and the type of trails that they're intended for. As you progress, you may want some tires that have some bigger knobs, give you a little more grip, more bite. If you are looking at that, a pretty common practice is to have a faster rolling rear tire and then a grippier front tire. So you can always keep that stock rear tire and just upgrade the front to get some more grip in that front end, which is where you really want it. The drivetrain is another big thing, and that's basically all the gears and the shifter, the derailleur, all those mechanisms that make the bike propel forward. Now, a few years ago, it was pretty common that you would see three by and two by drivetrains. That means two or three gears up front and then a smaller set of gears in the back. High-end bikes have long since moved away from that and it's trickling down into these lower end bikes. Uh, now you're gonna see a lot of like one by nine drivetrains. So one gear up front and then nine in the back. The things you wanna look for here are the biggest gear range in the back. You want the smallest number and the biggest number, the biggest range of those. That's gonna help you at speed and it's gonna help you have the right gearing when you're climbing up a really steep hill. The other thing you wanna look for is a clutched derailleur. It's basically a stronger spring in the derailleur that's activated when you're not shifting. And it's just gonna keep the chain on tighter. It's gonna make less noise and you're not gonna have chain drops and stuff like that. 
All right, so now that we've gotten through that brief overview, and believe me, there's so much more you can look into in every detail of that, uh, but we just don't have time for that. So let's go ahead and get to the bikes. Okay, first up, and in no particular order, is the Cannondale Trail 5 coming in at $960. Cannondale is sold at primarily REI, although I'm sure they're sold at other retailers as well, so you're getting kind of an experience that's somewhere between a big box store and an actual local bike shop. For that $960, you're going to get an SR Sun Tour XCM coil spring fork with 100 millimeters of travel. And again, that XCM falls right in the middle of the XC range of the SR Sun Tour forks. That fork goes into a straight head tube. The standout on this bike is the drivetrain. It's a MicroShift Advent X with 11 to 48 tooth range. Most of the other bikes in this category are gonna come with nine speed drivetrains. So this 10 speed is definitely a big advantage to this bike. And it's also the exact same drivetrain that I run on my Marin Rift Zone 2, and I'm a huge fan of it. As for the tires, you're looking at WTB Ranger comps 2.25s, that's front and rear. Those are definitely fast rolling, not very knobby tires. This might be a scenario where you want something knobbier and grippier up front. The brakes are Tektro M275 hydraulic disc brakes with 160 millimeter rotors in the front and rear. And as for the geometry of this bike, 68 degree head tube angle. Kind of coming right in the middle of some of the ones that are a little bit slacker and some of the older style bikes where they were a little steeper. And the other nice thing about it too is that it has ports for a dropper post for you to internally route one if you were to add one. If you don't know what a dropper post is, it's basically a lever actuated seat post that goes up and down. So you can drop it and get the seat out of the way whenever you're descending or going over any type of uh, technical terrain or anything like that. It's something that has a little bit of a learning curve, but it definitely can make a huge impact on your riding. Next is the Marin Bobcat Trail 4 coming in at $919. You can buy Marin bikes from local bike shops, and you can also buy them from a handful of online retailers as well. On this Bobcat Trail 4, you're going to get an SR Sun Tour XCM coil spring fork, same as with the previous bike, except that it has 120 millimeters of travel. This bike also has a straight head tube. For the drivetrain, it's another micro shift, but this is just the Advent, which is a 1x9. However, they have mated that to an 11 to 46 tooth cassette, so you're still getting a lot of gear range. For the tires, we're seeing another pair of WTBs, but this time they are the Trail Boss comps. The Trail Boss is actually quite a knobby tire, especially since it's kind of designed as a rear tire. So in the last couple years, they've redesigned it, and it's a much more grippier, much more beefier looking tire than it used to be. Another thing that we're seeing, just like the previous bike, are the Tektro M275 hydraulic disc brakes. However, on this bike, Marin has given you the 180 millimeter rotor up front, which will give you a little extra stopping power. In terms of the geometry, you're looking at a 67 degree head tube angle, so it's one degree slacker, in my opinion, and like I said at the beginning of this video, the slacker the better, especially in this category. So going from the 68 to 67, not a huge difference, but it's definitely going in the right direction, in my opinion. As for the cool extras on this bike, uh, the biggest thing is the dropper routing, same thing, so you've got ports for the cable to go in and out, and you can internally route a dropper post. And if you're interested in more of a deep dive into this bike, I had one as a media sample last year, and I did three different videos on it. One where I did a hands-on ride and review of it in stock form, then one where I upgraded it, and then one where I rode the upgraded version and gave you some thoughts and comparisons to going the path of upgrading a bike like that versus just spending more money on a better bike. So take a look at the card in the top corner of the screen and that'll link you to the first video in that series. Next is the Kona Lava Dome at $949. We're getting a step up on the fork on this one to an SR Sun Tour XCR32 coil spring fork although it is only 100 millimeters of travel. A nice thing about this bike is that you're getting a tapered head tube, so if you do decide to upgrade that XCR to some sort of air fork in the future, you're gonna have way more options out there than if you're just looking at straight steerer tube forks. Just like on that Marin Bobcat Trail, we're looking at a micro shift advent for the drivetrain, also the 11 to 46 tooth, so nine speed, big gear range, good drivetrain. And another thing, just like the Bobcat Trail, WTB Trail Boss, 29 by 2.25. Like I said, I think they're pretty good tires. They, they walk a good line between something that's really fast and also something that has a lot of grip. And one more thing, just like the Marin Bobcat Trail, the same Tektro hydraulic brakes and the same larger 180 millimeter rotor up front. For the head tube angle on this Lava Dome, we're looking at 68 degrees. However, do keep in mind that there is kind of the 27.5 brother of this bike, which is the Fire Mountain. And that has a little bit different geometry. So if you prefer smaller wheels, uh, and a little bit different geometry, you can check that one out. 
And one of the cool things about this bike that we haven't really talked about with any of the others, it does have, uh, you know, considerably wide rims on it to the point where it says it can accept up to 2.6 inch tires. Wider tires are going to give you more grip and they're also going to let you run a little bit lower pressure and kind of give you a little bit smoother of a ride as well. Next up at $909 is the Rocky Mountain Fusion 10. Like most of the bikes in this price range, you're getting an SR Sun Tour XCM fork with 100 millimeters of travel. This bike does have the tapered head tube, which is a plus. It's another Microshift Advent 1x9 drivetrain. However, they have only given you the 11 to 42 cassette in the rear, so it's going to make climbing a little bit harder on some of those really steep inclines. You're not going to have that 46 tooth gear to go into. For the brakes, we are looking at some Clarks, two piston hydraulic brakes, which I've never even heard of before. And those brakes do come with Shimano branded rotors, 160 millimeter front and rear. We're back to the faster rolling WTB Ranger comps, 29 by 2.25. And one of the big standouts on this bike is the geometry with a 66.5 head tube angle, which is the slackest of any of the bikes in this video. And the Rocky Mountain Fusion 10 does have a companion 27.5 bike, which is the Rocky Mountain Soul. Next up, and a bike that offers, at least on paper, a huge amount of value for the money is the Polygon Extrada 6 coming in at $899, although you will see $849 on the screen. That's just because it was on sale at the time that I was looking at this. Polygon bikes are exclusively sold through Bikes Online, which is a big online retailer. There's no local bike shop presence, so when you get the bike, it's up to you to put it together. It comes mostly assembled, but you have to do the final assembly on it. The one downside of an online distributor like that is, you know, if something goes wrong, you got to get on the phone, you got to talk to customer service. It's not something that you can just take the bike to the shop that you bought it from and have them adjust something or look at something or fix something. If you're somebody that likes to tinker with stuff, then probably not a big deal. If you're not really a mechanical person, then that could actually be a pretty big downside. Now, all that said, back to the value that you get, Suntour XCR fork. So Kind of the top of the line of the coil spring forks that they offer with 120 millimeters of travel so you do get that extended travel that we're seeing on some of these bikes but not all of them you do have a tapered head tube so if you want to upgrade that fork you have a lot easier time doing that so on this bike you're actually getting a shimano drivetrain which is nice to have that brand name it's a dior 11 speed 11 to 51 tooth so this is the best drivetrain of this group at least if you're looking at the number of speeds and the overall gear range the tires are Entity Spider Bait 2.25s. Entity is basically a house brand of Polygon, so that's one of the ways that they're saving some money there is by using tires that they're manufacturing versus purchasing tires from somebody else to put on their bikes. The brakes are Shimano MT201 hydraulic brakes, so it's nice to see that they've gone with the Shimano brand on these, although you're just looking at the 160 millimeter rotors front and rear. For the head tube angle, a nice 67 degrees, not quite as slack as that Rocky Mountain, but still a good angle that's going to give you a confident feel on the trail. And like a handful of other bikes in this video, it does have the internal routing for a dropper post should you decide to add one. And the final bike to look at is the Giant Talon 1, coming in at $980. This is the only bike I've seen in this price range to come with an air fork. It's an SXC32-2 air fork with 100 millimeters of travel in most sizes. Now I believe that this fork is sort of a house brand of Giant. It doesn't mean that it's bad. It's probably much better than any of the coil spring forks that we've seen in this video. It does only come with a straight steerer tube, but since you've already got an air fork to start with, upgrading is probably not going to be something you're going to have to worry about anyway. We do have another Shimano drivetrain on this bike. It is a Dior 10 speed with the 11 to 42 gear range. So nice brand with a Shimano. However, the overall gear range is on the lower end of the bikes that we've seen in this video. We're back to the Tektro M275 hydraulic disc brakes, and it does come with that larger 180 millimeter rotor in the front. For the tires, we're looking at Kenda boosters, and it's nice to see that these are actually 2.4 inch tires. In my opinion, 2.4 tires are kind of the sweet spot in terms of width, giving you a good amount of grip and not too much rolling resistance either. The Giant Talon has wheel sizes that increase as the frame size increases. So for the smaller sizes, you're getting 27.5 inch wheels. And in those cases, the head tube angle is 67.5 degrees. For the medium, you get your choice of 27.5 or 29. And then anything larger than that, you're getting 29. With the frame design for the 29 inch wheels, the head tube angle actually steepens to 68.5 degrees, which I'm not a huge fan of. And if you're looking at the 29er, it does make it the steepest head tube of any bike in this video. However, I am actually gonna be putting this bike to the test. I just purchased a Talon 2, 
which I'm going to do a couple upgrades to. Um, and obviously it's the same geometry. It's a 29er. It's a large. So I really want to find out, you know, does that 68.5 degree head tube angle being a little bit steeper, does it really make a difference on the trail? You know, it's still far better than the 70 and the 71 on some of these XC bikes and these cheaper bikes that you would see even just a few years ago. So if you are interested in the Giant Talon, stay tuned, subscribe to this channel, and uh, I'll have some videos out on that bike pretty soon. So there you have my six hardtails all coming in around the $900 price point. I'm sure there's other bikes that I missed and if you found some good ones, leave them in the comments so everybody else can see them. Like I said at the beginning of this video, I wanted to give you some of the basics, some of the knowledge of things you should be looking for, not necessarily just look at only the bikes in this video. That way if you see some other bike that looks interesting to you, you know what to be looking at to determine if it is a good bike. So thank you for watching this video. If I missed anything, if I overlooked anything, leave it in the comments. If you've got questions about these bikes, uh, deeper details, or any other bikes, leave them in the comments too. If you learned something or if you got something useful out of this, give me a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel, uh, like I mentioned earlier too. Check out some of my other videos. I've got a deeper dive into the Marin Bobcat Trail. Coming up, I'm gonna have a deeper dive into Giant Talon, both of those hands-on videos. So subscribe to my channel and stay tuned for those, and I will see you next time. Thanks again for watching.